I bought this kit for $10 at my local dollhouse store. I'll leave a link in the description. It comes with two metal tools, a tray, a hose, and some work gloves. It's a really easy kit and with a couple modifications it can look really great. I'll start things off by assembling the tray. The tray is laser cut from a thin piece of wood so I have to start by cutting these tabs. The laser cut pieces are very square so I'm using my sandpaper to make them more rounded so they'll look older and more natural. I sanded the top edges of the two side pieces as well. Once the pieces were sanded, I moved on to assembly. I glued the ends on first, removing excess glue as I went, and then added the side pieces last. I'll leave the tray to dry while I move on to create the hose. The hose is a flexible copper wire. I started by bending the wire into the shape I like. I want it to look like a coiled garden hose sitting on a surface. I used my X-Acto knife to cut the rubber coating so I could peel it back and cut a small piece of wire from the end. I needed to trim a piece of wire away so this brass fitting can fit in place. The other end is simpler since it just has a hole and all I had to do for this side was remove some of the plastic coating so I could slide it over the wire. I used super glue to attach the fittings. I finished the hose with a little bit of brown paint so it won't look so brand new. The kit comes with two metal gardening tools. I'll start by transforming the hand trowel. Whenever I'm painting metal, I like to mix my paint with a little bit of matte Mod Podge. I added a little ivory paint to the Mod Podge and started painting on the shovel to dull the shine. The Mod Podge helps my cheap acrylic paint stick to the smooth surface. Garden shovels take the most damage around the edges, so I added some matte Mod Podge and brown paint. Then I sparingly added some black paint and used my finger to diffuse it. I painted the handle with a mixture of dark brown paint and red, plus a little Mod Podge. I added two coats so I wouldn't be able to see the shiny metal underneath. Google tells me this is a hand cultivator. To make the tines look rusty, I'm using a little trick with some super glue. First I added super glue to the metal and then I dipped it into a little bucket I have of baking soda. The baking soda cures the glue immediately and creates a grainy texture. To me this texture looks a lot like rust. To further sell it as rust I added a coat of brown acrylic paint. And then I added some burnt sienna to the tips. To give this metal handle a different texture, I used a little bit of painter's tape. 
I wrapped the tape around the handle and then I crunched the end down and used some sandpaper to make it smoother. I created a muted green paint with some brown and green and then I added a little bit of black for aging. I finished it off with a little bit of dry brushing of silver. The metallic dry brushing really emphasizes the texture I created with the super glue and baking soda. To finish the box, I decided to give it a nice bright paint color. I'll be adding some newspaper and fake dirt, so if I stain this brown, it'll all blend in. Plus, I would likely use this on a potter's bench, which is also wood and likely brown, so I just wanted to make it an interesting color that will contrast. While the yellow was still wet, I just brushed on a little bit of brown paint to make this look older. With a really light touch, I added some black acrylic paint around the outside edges and the inside corners. I really enjoy making miniatures look old because it adds some realism and history to the pieces. The kit also includes these laser cut work gloves. They're cut out of this very thin suede like material. I started by gluing the wrong sides together. Layering the two pieces makes the gloves thicker and gives the front and back the same suede texture. I did the same with the thumb pieces and looked at my own hand to get a reference of where the thumb should be glued. Then I finished the glove with the wristband. When I assembled the second glove, I made sure the thumbs were in the same place. Then I got my chalk pastel so I can make these gloves look dirty and used. I used some brown chalk pastels and concentrated around the fingertips. I wasn't crazy about the muted tan color, so I tested a different color on a scrap piece and liked it a lot better. So I colored the gloves the yellow ochre color and added black to the fingertips. I end up doing one more thing to these gloves, but I already like them a lot better than the tan color. To finish off the tray, I lined it with some miniature newspaper. I got this in a random lot of miniatures, but you can print stuff like this right from the internet. I glued down the edges to disguise the fact that this newsprint is only one-sided. Now I'll fill this tray with my favorite fake dirt. I like to use the coffee grounds from K-Cups. The grounds themselves are so finely ground and they come in their own little container. I mix the coffee grounds with some watered down glue so they'll hold their shape. I used the miniature trowel to scoop the dirt onto the paper. I need smaller pieces of dirt scattered around so it looks more realistic. So I sprayed the tray with some watered down glue and sprinkled on more coffee grounds. I sealed the coffee grounds in place with some more watered down glue. You can use this combo of coffee grounds and watered down glue to fill miniature planters. Then I used the same dirt mixture to finish off the gloves. I added a little white glue and pressed the coffee ground and glue mixture in place. Now I'm using a grocery store flyer to make a miniature seed packet. I cut up an advertisement that would kind of look like the front of a seed packet and used some glue and seed beads to make it look like there's something inside of it. Then I cut it into a rectangle and wrote the word peas on the top. Then I sealed the seed packet with some gloss Mod Podge. 
Now I'll show you how to use the instructions themselves to make another miniature seed packet. I used a bit of the hose in the instructions and a combination of colored pencils and markers to draw a strawberry. I used a really fine tipped marker to make some pretend words and created a book like shape so I could fold this in half and cut it out. I didn't fill the seed packet and instead while I was folding it I tried to leave a little pocket of air in the middle so it won't be perfectly flat. To give it a really glossy finish I covered it with some scotch tape and cut off the excess. I've assembled a lot of miniature kits and I never do them exactly according to the instructions. I really enjoy adding simple details to make the miniature more realistic and interesting. If you'd like your own kit, make sure you check out the description below and I'll link the dollhouse store I got mine at. As always, thank you so much for watching and make sure you check out some of my other videos.